had to be on your back the whole game too, you punk. Yeah, but you gon' feel it, Cooley. I'm telling you, you gon' feel it. I told you, keep that camera running. You might miss him. We're gonna be in your face and letting you know the real talk. And welcome to the Not For Long Pro Football Show. We are going into our NFL Draft Lab 2017. Got our Bunsen burners, chemicals, concoctions. We're going to make this thing scientific going to the draft. Bill Nye, you got nothing on us. Clint Schweitzer, Noah Groniger, and such a huge guest today. An agent of the stars. Done so many. Lennox, Lewis, Oscar De La Hoya, Troy Aikman, Steve Young. That is Patrick Mahomes. First round draft pick of the Kansas City Chiefs quarterback out of Texas Tech. His agent, Lee Steinberg, will be joining us today, Mr. Schweitzer. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Lee's one of the most famous names in all of the, you know, in the field. And um, coming from the movie Jerry Maguire, which he was supposedly the inspiration for, he appears in the movie Jerry Maguire. And really the fact that people and sports fans started to become more, you know, um, knowing a lot more about what a sports agent does based around that film, um, seeing the, the glitz and the glamour, but also the, the dirty side, the money, the business, the. Yeah. These guys are geniuses. They have law degrees. They have so much contract verbiage they have to go through. And Lee Steinberg has been through it all, ups and downs. His career to the top, I think he's at eight first overall picks in the NFL draft. He's got Patrick Mahomes this year in the top 10. And the Chiefs have done it for the first time in 33 years. Can't wait to talk to Mr. Steinberg about the fact the Chiefs uh, have pulled the trigger on this and if he even believed that the Chiefs would do it after 33 years. Yeah, the Chiefs showed some interest early on and we were led to believe, but were they actually going to pull the trigger and was Mr. Steinberg you know, welcoming the idea of sending <laughs> uh, Patrick Mahomes to Kansas City? We're going to talk to him about all that and much more here on our NFL Draft Lab show. It's been since the Super Bowl since you've seen these two shining faces, heard our voices. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube and of course on our brand new iTunes, which is Great American Sports Network. Every Everything is under that banner now on iTunes, so subscribe for sure, man. And it's hard to think that these two glowing, shining faces that you have seen here all season long, you're coming back for our 2017 NFL Draft Lab. The last time the Chiefs drafted a quarterback, we weren't even in a thought. I was still eligible for abortion, in fact. <laughs> Well, I hadn't been conceived, just, an, just not even a thought in this world that the Noah was going to be born. But we have done it. We have done it. 34 years. Finally, Patrick Mahomes, quarterback, Texas Tech. Whether it works or it doesn't, it doesn't matter. They pulled the trigger. They've shown they can do it. And hopefully, if this doesn't work out, they'll do it again. But it, time will tell. They identified a, a strong arm quarterback, someone that uh, an arm that's uh, unlike what we've seen. Uh, as far as this year's draft class, you talk about Deshaun Watson. You talk about Mitch Trubisky. Patrick Mahomes is the guy they wanted. They were willing to move up, maybe do um, as early as five in the tech, in the uh, Titans spot to try to get this player. The fact that Andy Reid, John Dorsey, were not willing to rest on their laurels and let Alex Smith run this team, run this offense, um, you know, mediocr you know, into mediocrity. They're willing to go get this guy and groom him for the future. And you got to think he's in good hands. I love what this kid brings. I love his attitude. I love his finesse. I love his improvisation skills. I love what I see out of him. A lot of numbers. A lot of things. Texas Tech has put up. You know. A lot of quarterbacks in, in the past. What makes Mahomes different? Why is he a first-round pick? Why is he someone that could be a franchise quarterback, say, over you know Graham Harrell or Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury? Well, it's completely different uh, if you go and listen to just the John Gruden's quarterback camp or just listen to different interviews that Patrick Mahomes has done. He was given a lot more to do at the line of scrimmage, being able to tell everyone the play. It wasn't just look over to the sideline, see a card of Jessica... Uh, Beal? <laughs> or Jessica Simpson? Uh, yeah. Maybe Gumby? Maybe, like, what else do they put up there? Cheeseheads? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, like just a pretzel sign, just, a Coca Cola, Justin Bieber, just, and go back, and everyone knows the play. No, he was delivering it out. He was calling audibles at the line. He was getting everybody set, and then he was the one launching the ball down the field accurately. Only ten interceptions. Deshaun Watson had seventeen. If you're talking about a guy like, oh, he's too risky. He's a gunslinger. We can't have that. Fifty-three touchdowns, only ten interceptions. This guy's on fire. This guy's a Brett Favre. If you're looking for somebody, and yes, it's going to take some time to develop his footwork. He's going to learn behind Alex. Smith and you're thinking that could be scary is he going to be too careful like not in a year you're not going to teach him that he's going to learn the film work the, the footwork calling the extensive plays that are in Andy Reid's playbook and he is going to learn how to call plays how to read defenses at the NFL level Alex Smith will teach him that and he'll be ready to roll in 2018. Well, before we get to the rest of the draft for the Kansas City Chiefs and otherwise, uh, we want to go ahead and welcome our guest he is the agent of the Kansas City Chiefs first round draft pick Patrick Mahomes it is Lee Steinberg, Steinberg Sports. Lee, welcome to the show. How's everything going, man? 
<laughs> Everything's great. We're actually getting the first opportunity to catch up on sleep, <laughs> and uh, uh, it's uh, but it's been an exciting three days. Absolutely, and your uh, your client uh, Patrick Mahomes. Everybody very excited about him here in Kansas City, um, taking at the tenth spot. The Chiefs moving up seventeen spots to get this guy. What uh, at what point did you know that the Chiefs were interested in this quarterback? And uh, since the Chiefs haven't drafted one in thirty three years, did you at any point even take them seriously that they were interested? It's been since Todd Blackledge in uh, eighty three. I have a long relationship with the Chiefs. It goes back to a friendship with Lamar Hunt and a friendship with Clark Hunt. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, we selected him for our philanthropic awards at our Super Bowl parties uh, this year. And uh, ironically, Patrick Mahomes ended up giving the award with me to Clark Hunt. But it goes back to uh, 19... 19- 77 and a running back named Mark Bailey in 1980, Brad Buddy, and of course years and years with Derek Thomas and uh, Duran Cherry and then Tony Gonzalez. So uh, they became interested in Patrick pretty early in the process, but it's now an elongated second season of scouting. Uh, so we knew they had interest and our feeling was that the best place for Patrick would be an organization with great visionary stability and ownership, uh, with a talented front office, with a coach, and also with the opportunity to have him learn behind a talented player. And the football god smiled on us Thursday night, and it all happened. Um, but as we were sitting there tracking it, we were also aware that, the, that there were a number of other teams um, um, that were interested. Had they not traded where they did, my own feeling is that New Orleans would have taken um, Patrick on the next pick and certainly Arizona behind that. And reports are that the New York Giants were trying to trade up. So they moved exactly where they needed to. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that, just kind of the lucky feel being drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs with Andy Reid, a quarterback guru. Uh, he's had his hands on Brett Favre, drafted Donovan McNabb in the first round, and just how it is to be with the Kansas City Chiefs and behind an Alex Smith who can teach him just the nuances of the game, uh, some of the footwork, the what it takes to watch the film, and just reading defenses at the pro level. It's a real gift to uh, have Alex Smith there, who was the first player in the draft, is really bright and uh great in, in respect to managing the game and teams 12 and 4 last year so um, I had always thought that the adjustment between the collegiate game and the professional game is is so profound that um, when we put these expectations on young quarterbacks who get selected high and because of the cap need to come right in and start um, if that development of that player is not right, it can end up foreshortening his career. So having a quarterback guru in Andy Reid is huge. Having a team that has a history of defying the normal uh, crash and then rise and stays near the top because they have a clear methodology. Uh, Having great fans. Uh, So the situation was wonderful. Um, And when people ask me what kind of team I wanted him to go to, I said, look, it's not important when he begins his starting career. What is important is that when he begins his starting career, he can then reel off the next 10 to 15 years at a high level. So um, there were other teams like Arizona that sort of fit that same uh, definition. The Giants would have fit the definition, but... um, um, you know, we were absolutely overjoyed that it was Kansas City. Well, uh, the numbers stand out. I mean, um, Patrick threw for over 5,000 yards, 53 touchdowns to just 10 interceptions. But talk about what kind of a person uh, Patrick is. I mean, obviously his father played professional sports uh, over a decade in the major leagues as a pitcher. Um, and, and you can clearly see that uh, Mahomes has a, a rather large work ethic. Just kind of talk about what kind of person the Chiefs are getting at this position because you got a guy like Alex Smith in there, salt of the earth type guy. What kind of person is uh, Patrick? So you might remember that our practice is all about role modeling, that people like Derek Thomas did third and long, uh, 
to run Cherry, did the <coughs> Cherry Foundation. It's about retracing roots to the high school collegiate and professional community. And what that gives you is players that usually come out of strong families. He's got an enormous support system. He's got his father, his mother, uh, extraordinary amounts of uh, relatives and friends. So he comes out of, uh, takes a village, and he's got all of that. He has a amazing ability to handle stress and pressure. He went on a 19 uh, city, uh, three and a half week uh, jaunt where where he was, you know, flights are getting canceled as he's going to teams or he's getting flown into Orlando instead of Jacksonville and has to figure out what to do. And through it all, a uh, real calmness. He's very bright, loves to learn, um, will be like a sponge picking stuff up. Um, charming personality, enthusiastic, um, considerate of other people, um, and uh, he's just a joy to be around, and uh, never complains, it's always, what more can I do, what more can I do, and uh, you're going to love him in Kansas City, he, he carries an infectious joy, um, he uh, is a natural leader, um, and uh, give it to him. I mean, we went into this process understanding that any quarterback in the spread is going to have all these uh, doubts about his ability to adapt to the game. <clears throat> he spent six weeks training with Mike Shepard, a quarterback guru, and killed himself to master as quickly as he could the uh, uh, ball under center and three-step drop. And, um, he's a uh, <clears throat> gym rat, a a, a, a film rat. Um, he's got everything you want. Um, you know, so when I look at over the years, you know, having everybody from Steve Bartkowski to Warren Moon, Troy Aikman, Steve Young, Ben Roethlisberger, he, he fits the everything you'd want in a franchise quarterback. Someone you can build around for 10 to 15 years. Someone that you can win because of rather than with. And importantly, someone who in critical and adverse situations, when everything's against you, you know, the, you've thrown a couple picks, the crowd is booing, the game's getting out of hand, your center's looking at you like you're on hallucinogenics. <laughs> Can you elevate your level of play at that point to pull a team along on your back to and through the playoffs to the Super Bowl? And, and he certainly got that potential. But as a person, He's uh, really a splendid young man who was raised really well and has navigated the huge process very gracefully. Well, Lee, you mentioned it right there, the stress and pressure that he handles. And I wanted to ask you about that, uh, just how he's going to handle it. Uh, if he knows kind of the history of the Chiefs, if you've kind of let him in, that they haven't drafted a quarter or first-round quarterback in 33 years. He's the first one since Todd Blackledge. And the, the pressure that comes with that, the fans look at him as the savior. And if this doesn't work, the Chiefs may not pull the trigger for another 33 <laughs> years. So does he know the pressure, and can he handle that? One of the reasons that um, he picked... Uh, football over baseball, which obviously was in his heritage, uh, he loves that pressure. <laughs> and he loves being the person on the line with the ball. He embraces it. And um, the best quarterbacks have the ability to compartmentalize, adopt a quiet mind. Um, he yearns for that. Um, now, as someone who's represented you know, the first pick of the draft eight times, 61 first round draft picks, and loads of quarterbacks who may make it from my perspective it's it's ideal to have him learn for a little while behind a talented player but um you're never going to find someone more game uh, what you would view as pressure uh <laughs> he he tunes out and <laughs> loves being the guy who has the ball in his hands third and long and has to sort of you know figure out how to keep the drive alive so uh and i've gone through with him the history of the Kansas City Chiefs from when they were the Dallas Texans and moved and, and Lamar and the great you know rivalries between uh, Oakland and Kansas City back in the early days and so he has uh, some sense of the history and tradition I've you know explained to him how amazing the fans are um, and you know the, the Kansas City's uh, uh, 
an interesting city with the you know, the fountains and great food and all the rest of it. So um, he, he's had a, a, a pretty thorough education in, in chiefdom. Well, you know, Leon, I'm gonna, I got to ask you because obviously back in 2011, Sam Bradford was the last quarterback, uh, last person to take advantage of the giant rookie contracts. Since the rookie wage scale was set and implemented, um, how has the duties for for people like yourself and agents changed uh, in the NFL when it comes to the draft? Well, pretty dramatically because if you recall, before 2011, um, even though there was a cap between 93 and 2011, you know, I had the first pick in the draft six of those first seven years. And, uh, oh wait, I had for at any rate, I had it the first three years. And so, um, we could craft very different and creative contracts. And the contractual wars, unfortunately, often spilled over into holdouts and the rest of it. Um, with this new tight cap, um, some of the issues um, that we used to negotiate over sort of fade into oblivion because a team has an obligation to pay not just a maximum but a minimum and so they tend to offer exactly what the slot will yield so it's not like hours of back and forth on that the issues of guarantees and the rest of it well the first 16 players last year got totally guaranteed contracts for skill and injury. So it ought to be a smooth, easy process. Um, the, the duty of helping a player become a role model, retrace his roots, uh, the, being able to help prepare him for a second career, mentor him into the whole uh, situation are still there. And then the draft, of course, every single decision a player makes about drafting is his own. Um, they can decide to train where they want, whether or not they go to, you know, the all-star games and the combine and what they do at pro scouting days. So a lot of effort goes into uh, helping a player with that decision making. And um, but clearly the rookie negotiation uh, is no longer the the long elongated war that uh, teams and agents have. And that part of it's pretty smooth, and there's not a massive amount that an agent can do to alter what the cap structure is. Well, um, and the guys, we're talking to Lee Steinberg, uh, SteinbergSports.com, and I've just always been fascinated by what you guys do, and, and yourself being someone that's always been such in the limelight, and people talking about you, whether it's good or bad over the years, and you know, for yourself, I know you took a long time away from the game, and um, kind of went through some personal things, and here you are back, dealing with these guys again, doing what you're supposed to do. Uh, how does it feel, just in these last few years, kind of, you know, your renaissance, and coming back into the game, and uh, being there, and being right back, you know, at the top, you know, with, again, first round picks, like you did back in the day, I mean, what's it been like for you, kind of this journey, to get back uh, to the top? So after a long um, career that started back in 1975, um, you know, which had a big baseball, basketball practice, boxers like Oscar De La Hoya and Lennox Lewis, Olympic stars, um, writing a couple of best-selling books and doing, um, you know, films like Jerry Maguire. I hit some problems in my personal life in the early 2000s and did the wrong thing and turned to alcohol. So in 2010, I made a decision to hand my practice over to the uh, younger agents and, and go live in sober living, focus on that problem. So I'm now in my eighth year of sobriety. Last year, uh, we had Paxton Lynch, who yep. uh, was uh, also picked in the first round. And... Uh, so it's exciting. It's the ability to influence good values in young men's lives, prepare them for a fulfilling life, and nothing is more exciting than a draft day. You have all of this family, extended family. There were 120 people there um, in uh, Tyler, Texas. And so it's the culmination and fruition of all these years of dreams and hopes and discipline and hard work and the player and his family and the anxiety of not knowing exactly what's going to happen, it builds into this um, uh, multitudinous explosion of uh, joy at the end. And so it, um, 
it really is uh, uh, worth the struggle. Well, Lee, you had long been an advocate to get uh, a team back in Los Angeles. Now we've got two. We've got the Los Angeles Rams. Kind of a tough first year for them. The Jeff Fisher, Eric Dickerson fight, Jared Goff not quite being ready. And now the uh, Los Angeles Chargers, as tough as it, as it is for me to say, in a twenty to 30,000 seat soccer stadium. So what is this like, uh, finally having two teams back in Los Angeles? Uh, what does it mean to you? Well, my view of the whole thing is that you shouldn't take teams out of markets where they're loyally supported. Um, just to get a bigger stadium. And um, so I would go all the way back to the St. Louis uh, football Cardinals not uh, moving. If, if they hadn't moved and the old Baltimore Colts hadn't moved, it set off this whole chain where it all became about uh, franchise values and state-of-the-art stadium. And I think it sacrifices the long-term fandom. So, for example, in Los Angeles, we're adjust readjusting to the Rams being back they were very uh, welcome to town LA is not the blase place that stereotype makes it you know they sold out their season tickets there was huge press excitement we didn't ask for the Chargers to come here we didn't want to break the hearts of young Charger fans um now they're here um and they will be supported too. Remember, this market has 15 million people within a couple hours of being able to go to a stadium on a Sunday, and uh, and it's filled with football fans. And so, um, the, for the fans who do go to StubHub Stadium to see the Chargers, it's a great soccer stadium. It's got great view lines. The worst seat is probably better than uh, <laughs> some of the seats in the Coliseum. So. They're all sold out. They will be loyally supported. They had a good draft. Uh, and for the Rams, um, you know, I was chairman of Save the Rams. Uh, I did a good job as chairman of Save the Giants uh, baseball team because we were able to prevent them from moving to Tampa and Oakland A's who stayed in town. But obviously I did such a great job with the uh, hitting up the uh, Save the Rams effort. They were, in, uh, <laughs> they were in St. Louis for all those years. I didn't want to break the hearts of young uh, uh, Ram fans in St. Louis. Uh, what makes it a little different is that from 1946 to 1994, the Rams were here. Sure, yeah, exactly. I, I grew up loving uh, L.A. Ram football. So can this market handle two teams? Very easily it can. It's got enough corporations, sponsors, the entertainment industry, and this humongous population that um, will sell out every game. Remember, football is like a concert date. It's not, you know, 81 home games for a baseball team. It's only uh, uh, two preseason uh, games and then eight regular season games at home. It's like selling out 10 concert dates. So people are excited. Um, you know, I regret uh, taking teams out of another market, but People are excited. It's a great football market. It loyally supports USC and UCLA. And uh, uh, people are, you know, fired up. And also, I'm fired up because that means Kansas City will come yep. to Los Angeles every year. And it will be home and home against the Chiefs. So that will be fun, too. And the Raiders eventually, I guess, will end up in Las Vegas. And that's only an hour flight from Los Angeles, and that'll be home and home also. And then we have Paxton Lynch up at Denver, and that'll be home and home. So um, it's all exciting. Maybe one day Paxton Lynch and Patrick Mahomes will duel like I had Fragman and Steve Young dueling for the, <laughs> for the Super Bowl. Yeah, the, that was extremely memorable. I'll tell you what, Lee. Thanks for uh, thanks for everything. Thanks for bringing uh, Patrick Mahomes here to Kansas City. We're all very excited excited to see his progression and watching him play. Um, and all that you've done over the years, just uh, a big fan of you know everything that dated back uh, to the movie Jerry Maguire. Knowing what a sports agent was, finding that out, it became like you know for sports agents what Top Gun was for naval aviators. I mean, it really opened a lot of doors. You've always been one of the best names in the business. We can't thank you enough. And hey, we got to come out to LA this year for a Chiefs Chargers. We'll have to catch up and pick your brain a little bit about the business man we'd love to do that if you if you'd have us love to do it thank you for having me hey thanks a lot lee we'll catch up soon man take care Bye.
And a huge thanks to Agent Lee Steinberg, Agent of the Stars, for coming on with us. He's glad that the Kansas City Chiefs selected Patrick Mahomes, think it's the perfect situation behind Alex Smith, learning for that year, or hopefully just one year. I know Kevin Keatsman's calling for two, three, but uh, also learning under uh, head coach Andy Reid, yeah. quarterback guru, ha had his hands on Brett Favre, drafted Donovan McNabb, turned those guys into great quarterbacks, Hall of Famer on Brett Favre, and now he's got his hands on Patrick Mahomes. And it's not like they just sat at 27 yeah. and just, oh, Patrick Mahomes fell in our laps. They identified and they were aggressive. They moved up to get Patrick Mahomes, and he's the complete opposite, the antithesis of Alex Smith. This guy's a gunslinger. He's not going to play it safe. He's not going to take your check downs if he sees something open downfield. I think he's going to learn to be more careful than a Jay Cutler. He's going to learn the footwork that Jay Cutler just refuses to learn, and he is going to be a star in the making. We found our guy. Took 34 years, but we found him finally. Patrick Mahomes. Feels good as a Chiefs fan. And like you said, he hope if this fails, the Chiefs will be willing to do this again. Try to identify that person and, you know, hey, what can you say about Lee Steinberg? He's still got the magic touch. Great to see him back in the business after going through a lot of personal trouble. He's back. He's written a book called The Agent. Great book. Uh, pick that up on Amazon. Uh, SteinbergSports.com is his website and you know talk about the rest of the draft as we try to kind of go through this quickly because after Patrick Mahomes you look at some guys that I don't know I think that down the road are going to be able to help this team um, Chiefs have clearly built some depth here Tano Passigno at defensive end, Kareem Hunt at running back. People are saying could be an Emmett Smith. I watch the highlights. I'm not seeing a lot of burst. I see uh, a well-rounded football player and a guy he's that got balance, contact after contact balance, where he can keep his footing. And like, but do you see anyone mentioned? that contributes yeah. next year? Jehu Chesson, a receiver from Michigan, um, kind of had a, an injury-plagued senior season. I, I, I like Kareem what, Hunt will definitely just because we don't have carries. a lot of the running back spot. I don't but, know if C.J. Spiller makes this team. Were you disappointed though? You, you, the Chiefs take Kareem Hunt. They had um, Alvin Kamara sitting there in the second round. They go with Tano Passigno, uh, the defensive end from Villanova. Yeah. Where, where, what are your thoughts on Kamara? Did the Chiefs? We talked about Absolutely how they might need a home Kamara. run. He could have been a home run hitter. Jamal Charles guy who could be going to the Denver Broncos. We're sure. hearing he's got a visit scheduled with them, but Alvin Kamara could be just Jamal Charles 2.0. He's got the burst. He's got what you want catching the ball in the backfield. I just think he's more versatile and brings more of a home run hitter that the Chiefs are lacking right now. Uh, that. Kareem Hunt just doesn't bring you. If he can turn into that Emmett Smith type, although we don't have a Larry Brown, Nate Newton, Jay Novacek, <laughs> we don't have the Michael Irvin, Troy Aikman, but hopefully we're Alvin Harper. That. Hopefully he can. Alvin Harper, I always yes. am the one that adds his name at the when you, when you go through all those players. Yeah, I always say I Alvin, Alvin Harper. Harper. Uh, and yeah, I wanted Alvin Kamara. I mean, somebody who brings more of a punch than Kareem Hunt can. Yeah, if he turns into an Emmett Smith, then you might have something there, but time will tell. What about later in the rounds? Because we talk about, you know, someone like J.U. Cheston in the fourth for Michigan. This team obviously needs help at the receiver position, if nothing else, just in bodies. And uh, we saw that uh, maybe Cheston had, uh, he was a little more rounded as a player than we thought. Some returning kicks at Michigan um, was really good in the, when used in the red zone, has some decent size. What about later in the rounds? Because a lot of people look at this draft and they say, hey, the Chiefs are building some stuff from the future. They have a solid roster with a lot of veterans on it right now. Maybe uh, this is clicking, including Patrick Mahomes, clicking towards 18, 19, 20 with some of these picks. And then later in the rounds, and any of the free agents stand out at you? Yeah, I mean, uh, d definitely we've mentioned J.U. Chesson. Uh, he looks like a big physical, just plotting guy, but you turn on the tape and he just, just a burst, just he blows off the screen. Like we mentioned, he's catching passes in traffic. He's returning kicks. And Ukemi Elijewe, uh, Georgia Southern linebacker, who was top 50 prospect coming out of high school, went to Florida State, had some trouble there, got kicked out, went to Georgia Southern. I like what I see in him. He, he reminds me of a Derek Johnson. He's got speed. He can hit the hole fast. He's covering tight ends. He's I see him moving into the slot, covering receivers, which I didn't expect to see. So uh, just for the undrafted uh, free agents, uh, rookie guys coming out here, Ricky Aliafua out of Utah State. State, a defensive end. I like what I see there coming off the edge. He's not a tall guy, but he looks strong. He looks quick. Looks like he can get off the uh, blocks, block shedding. And Trey Edmonds, running back out of Maryland, a six foot one, 220 running back. Throwing some numbers at that position here, yeah. clearly with also the Virginia Tech running back. As a rookie, just a 77 yard run against Alabama. I like what up there. Devin Chappelle, a safety out of Oregon State, a thumper. Kind of he reminds me uh, of a Cam Chancellor with the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Alonzo Moore, wide receiver out of Nebraska, kind of the That's same That's the one mold. that jumped off at me. Yeah, kind of the same mold of a J.U. Chesson. Uh, you look at this guy, he's tall, he's leaping over people, making catches, but I see a lot more. I 
see some speed. I see good route running. Um, and then you got look at guys like Wyatt Houston, tight end out of Utah State. Marcus Kemp, wide receiver out of Hawaii. These are just camp bodies out yeah. here. They're nothing. These guys are going to be cut as soon as they get the chance to. And uh, Anas Hasek is one I wanted to mention, a wide receiver out of West Florida. He reminds me of a homeless version of Tyreek Hill. So that's Why homeless? Everyone's, he says a poor man's Tyreek Hill. A poor, he's a homeless man's Tyreek Hill. He, coming from West Florida, you have no idea when he steps up to the NFL competition what he's going to offer. But he's got speed. He's got burst. He has some wiggle on those hips, as they like to say. Some draft speak there for you. Uh, but you just don't know when he gets up to the NFL level. But it is an, a name to keep an eye on. Well, as we look at the rest of the draft, this is the NFL Draft Lab. And we've basically you know, given you a Kansas City Chiefs Draft Lab 2017. The rest of the draft, it's hard to gauge. You know, you want to throw out grades. You want to throw out um, analysis of these drafts. Hard to do. Chad Chris, Kelly, Mr. Relevant for the Denver Broncos. Cleveland, the Cleveland Browns have a lot of sexy names. They pick up, you know, Miles Garrett. They pick up, Jabril you know, a guy Peppers, like Jarrell Peppers. Yeah. He's going to probably play safety there. So the Browns, you know, on paper getting better. David Njoku, tight end out of Miami, they picked up. So the, a lot of the names that you've been hearing what on about these a, shows. A Mitchell Trubisky, that the, the, the Bears trade up um, to get him. Bears um, fans the are just spot. beside themselves. Oh, I wanted Solomon Thomas, the defensive tackle of Stanford. Just like, seriously, like, okay, maybe he's a Warren Sack. That, but you guys desperately need a quarterback. You sign Mike Glennon to this huge contract, $18 million per year, but it's really a one-year deal. You can get out of it after the first year. You've got to take a chance. Maybe you didn't like, don't like Mitchell Trubisky, but you don't know. The scouts have looked at him. They decided to trade up from three to two. That You guys got a quarterback. If he hits, you guys are golden. Like, Do not talk about this defensive tackle or you wanted a safety from Ohio State. Like, This is your guy. Get on board, and hopefully it works out for One you. One thing we've learned, um, of course, only six – Players in the last 30 years have won Super Bowls that were um, playing on teams that did not draft them. I'll yeah. take my chances. I will roll my dice with a quarterback that you identify and draft. It doesn't always work. We know that. Just ask the Cleveland Browns. Just ask um, a lot of teams. The Bears have had trouble at the quarterback position for so long. Um, it's 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 at the point where we're just glad the Chiefs have finally done it. We don't know where this is going to go. He may never see the field. He may never develop. And if he doesn't pull the trigger again, as soon as you find out he's not your guy, go and pull the trigger again. Don't wait another 34 years. That's ridiculous. Don't bring in the Blaine Gabberts of the world. Just Matt Castles, Alex Smith. No, pull the trigger again. You're going to find your guy. Well, guys, we want to thank you so much for watching, for listening to the Not For Long Pro Football Show, our NFL Draft Lab edition. Great to come at you here in the month of May, talking about the NFL draft talking about football because it'll be here before you know it and we want to thank our guest um agent lee steinberg for joining us to talk about patrick mahomes a guy we're very excited about and you the can tell he is too palpable here in kansas you're City. right and it is going to be a lot of pressure i'm glad lee said that he handles the pressure he handles the stress well he looks forward to it where we might run away just pressure stress i can't deal with it he looks forward to that the third and longs the late game situations and he's going to need that because kansas city's looking at him as our savior and if we don't do this if he doesn't do this we could be looking at another huge drought for a first round quarterback hope that's not the case guys thank you so much we want to invite you to of course follow us on twitter at gasn sports our website gasnsports.com it's all there hit it up hit the site up love the interaction keep it coming who do you want to hear next what do you want to hear your team analyzes in this draft are you a buffalo bills fans are you a green bay packers fan hit us up we'll or go through that if draft. if you're a bills fan you don't have a gm or a scouting department but yeah, aside from that yeah you may have some questions for a us lower first that. round pick than you would have liked thanks to us the <laughs> cheese but thank you